Welcome to our series on visual journaling. We'll be using the beautiful new Strathmore visual journals. And our goal for this series is that it's both informal and informative. So I'm going to pretend like you're all going to join me in my studio and let's get started. Well, here we are back and we've done the inside of our journals with color and with words and with alterations. And now it's time to talk about some techniques for the cover. And I'd like to emphasize that even though I'm working with covers today, anything I'm doing can be done inside the books too because the pages are so strong and able to take some of the heavier gels and mediums and textures. The first method is a spray gesso or um, clear acrylic resist. Um, spray gesso is one of my favorite products. It's so versatile and makes a beautiful resist. This journal was done using some of the same materials I will be showing you. And then I did the cover uh, letters. I wanted it to say um, 2010. How many people know what 2010 is in Roman numerals? Well, I had to look it up too, and it's MMX. So I thought that that was a nice um, cover idea for this journal that was also done with a resist technique. So our materials for this are spray gesso, some treated canvas, um, laser cut, chipboard or this is actually cardstock and these are needlepoint uh, materials that people who needlepoint use love the circular grid and the first thing that you do is lay these elements onto the treated canvas and give them a very good spray from about 10 inches away with the spray gesso or cl clear acrylic. This is what is going to be your resist. I'm not going to spray these, but um, this would be the method that I would use. And then you let that dry. We'll move that over. When it's dry, you're going to actually see A little bit of the pattern on here. I've already started laying the color on and I think you can see that the patterns are starting to emerge. Sometimes it takes more than one coat and so the other materials or paints I'm using here are the mica-based um, water-soluble paints and you spray those kind of liquefy them almost to uh, a lipsticky consistency. So they're soft like that. And I'm going to start applying this. And you just have to believe that that pattern is gonna emerge here as we go along. Let's change up the colors a little bit. This really luscious paint blends well. Let's soak in a little bit. And let's add one more color here. All right, as I said, it may take two applications. Let's, let's see what we get here. I'm seeing our pattern emerge here. You can see the texture that this is adding to this. And go over it some more. Look at that. Definitely 
textures coming through there. Let's come down here to where the numbers are. Remember, these were the um, cardstock numbers that I used as a stencil. This is a subtle technique, and the reason it's good is because then it can be your first layer, and you can come in again with um, collage. Layering on the colors here. And I'm going to give this one more swipe. And I think you'll get the idea. You can see the colors emerge here. The numbers are coming through. So I blend that all together. And I have a beginning here for a beautiful canvas cover for my journals. Continuing with our techniques for journal covers, we're going to concentrate on textures and gels in this particular um, method of making a beautiful cover for your journal. You can see here that on this finished one, we've got um, matte against shiny and we've got a lot of movement here and some old book pages and um, I'll show you how to recreate that. These Strathmore covers are wonderful just the way they are but they're and they're very very heavy and therefore you can use them just like a substrate um, for paint application and I'm using today um, heavy gels, a medium gel, and a coarse pumice gel. And <clears throat> a pumice gel is something that you can make yourself by just adding sand to gel. It leaves a very gritty, wonderful, textury feel, as you will see. The first step is to take the journal cover, and I'll show you on the back here, and rough it up with some sandpaper and I'm doing a circular motion just to give it some some tooth so that when I uh, put the gesso on it it's going to stick. Alright so I have already prepared this by sanding and putting um, a coat of gesso on it and um, I did some of the techniques ahead of time because they take a while to dry and then we'll show you how to apply paint. So this is a purchase stencil that I like because it has a lot of motion to it and I'm going to take my my heaviest gel for this and with a putty knife And the best way that I can explain this is it's pretty much like frosting a cake. I'm getting the gel into the cutout areas. I like some of them high and then some of them low and textured up. Okay. Carefully peel it off. And you can see that we've got this corner textured up and this is what it looks like when it's dry and painted. And next, this is the coarse pumice. It's about as textury as you can get. So I lay that right in, very gritty. Lay some of that in. Smooth it out. And your toolboxes at home and your kitchen are probably full of texture tools. There's just all sorts of things that you might already have that will texture up these gels and mediums. See, that really holds, it's like very thick frosting. It really holds the texture process. And 
then just with my regular gel, which also acts as a glue, I can come in and really just paint with it, do some swirls, I'm trying to get contrast here. The um, paint, <clears throat> paints kind of collide and um, create new colors as they settle into the hills and valleys of this texturing. And here's a little texture tool that I found at the store. Come in with that a little bit. It's very much like plain. So I've got three distinct textures here. So I'll turn this around. These are my textures that have already dried. And I'm going to take a little bit of this gel medium and show you that another use for it as a glue. Remember we talked about old books and old book pages and uh, I like to include those with this process. So I can lay that down come back with a little gel over it to seal it and help hold it down. And then maybe one more little <clears throat> section so that we have it flowing through the whole front of the journal. Lay it right down here. Okay. So this is what this looked like before I started to paint it. And now I'll come back with some of uh, the paints that have mica in them. And let's see how we can color this up a little bit. You can see I'm painting on top of that pumice gel and how different it looks on the pumice than it looks on this heavy gel. So we'll throw a little color in there. And I just like to wipe some back and then what remains down in the little crevices is interesting. And let's mix up our colors here. Remember, work in progress. You can always come back into this. You could come back in with a very dark color and wipe it off and it would just remain in the edges of the design, kind of highlighting the design. I'm trying to knit this together with color, so I'll bring some of the color over here. And you see it start revealing the patterns that I cut into the heavy gel. Now, if this looks like fun, I can assure you that it really is because each texture is going to take the color in a different way. Okay, so you can imagine by the time that the bottom part of this dries and we keep adding color, this journal is going to pop right up at you. And you can also see that this wonderful heavy cover is holding it flat. And I would think that that would be a very inviting journal to sit down and uh, write some of your thoughts in. These covers are heavy enough as well. This is the, the front of the Guatemalan journal that I talked to you about earlier. Um, travel journals are fun because you can buy little trinkets from street vendors and add them to the cover. Um, I poke holes right through this cover to uh, put the brads in. This is a post and screw knob, you can see. I used one of those on here for a little handle.
and other little items from where you have uh, been adds up to a very three-dimensional interesting cover. In this case, I would uh, wait till I got home from my vacation to do the, the cover, but there's all sorts of possibilities because um, you have a, a nice strong background to attach it to. So let's line up these journals. And I don't know if you remember what Dr. Seuss said in one of his many books so many years ago, but I always think of it when I think of journaling. And Dr. Seuss said, oh, the places you will go. And I think if you start um, with your journaling process, it will take you many places too. <laughs>